In this demo, we're going to take a look at how you can query Sheets data in Google Drive directly with BigQuery. All the demos, again, are inside of our public course repository under Data Engineering and Demos. Naturally, we're going to be adding and probably changing the names of these, so just refer to this page and you'll see all of the ones that we have. We're going to find the simple external data query. So here's a little bit of information about where you can actually query. BigQuery's got the two types of storage, the native storage, and then those federated queries where they, it can query the data, but it doesn't live inside of BigQuery from all these different sources. This demo is going to focus on Google Drive. So first thing that we need to do is we need to create our data source. So we're going to navigate to sheets.new. Boom, we got a new spreadsheet. And the next part is we're just going to copy in some data. Anything you want, as long as it starts within um, cell A1. And one of the really cool things about Google Sheets is you can actually invoke a machine learning API by putting in a cell equals Google Translate. What do you want to translate? What content? What's this target, sorry, the source language? That's English. What language is it going to? That's Spanish. That's a two-letter code for it. And then boom, you get a translation for it too. So we can say like BigQuery is awesome. And the weather is terrible. Whatever you want. And if you wanted to look at some of the other language codes, let's go ahead and pull up some of the codes. Two letter codes. Let's see what we got. Indo European. Let's get some special characters in there. And now let's do German. And then bam, bam. Ah, so it's not supported. What about Chinese? Oh, Chinese. Or I can look it up. CH. CH. That's what I want. Boom. All right. Now let's go ahead and check how we get this data live into BigQuery. Now we're going to make changes here. We're going to see those live inside of BigQuery as well. So what you do is copy the URL of the sheet. I've got that copied on my clipboard. And we're going to navigate back to Google Cloud Platform inside of BigQuery. We're going to create a new data set. We're going to call it e-commerce. Data set doesn't already exist. So we're going to create a data set. Maybe this is a project about uh, product translations or something like that. Default settings are fine. We've got a new data set. Data set is just a container that holds those tables, views, and machine learning models. It's empty right now. That's why that didn't drill out any, into anything. We're going to create a brand new table. And instead of having it be an empty table, the source is going to be Drive, which is where Google Sheets lives. And I'm going to paste in my Drive URI. I'm going to specify that it, it is a Google Sheet. I don't have to worry about the range. If I wanted to do just a subset of that data, that's fine. It's an external table. There you go. That's exactly what we're going to be demoing. And the table name, we're just going to call it translation. Say you had product titles or descriptions that you just wanted to get into different languages really quickly. You need to provide a schema. So we're going to say schema input. We don't want it to auto detect it. We provide the schema for you uh, in the demo. Scroll down, boom. You can just literally paste it in there, or edit it with the text UI. Scrolling down to advanced options, we do have a header row. So we're going to write one for header row to skip. Create the table. Now we have the table. Clicking on the table, you get a couple of free options. Quick uh, query table. Gets you your table name, boom. When I said free, it's just mainly you can get the syntax for free. BigQuery will charge you for the, the bytes of data that you process. Of course, there is the free uh, tier. Up to a certain amount of terabytes are free per month of data process. This definitely won't even be near that limit. Select what columns. Uh, if you didn't want to do star, that's a bad practice. You can actually go into the schema and click the columns, which is kind of cool. Always good habit, more format query. Since it's an external query, it doesn't actually know how much data it's going to process ahead of time because it's not stored natively. But regardless, we're going to go ahead and run that. Federated queries take a little bit longer because let's authenticate that connection out there. But boom, there is our data directly from Drive. Again, a very small amount of data, 477 bytes. 
So say we wanted to just add in a bunch of other uh, different languages. Let's see, uh, Korean, French, let's see here. Um, uh, maybe, I'm sure my lack of language knowledge codes, let's see. What do we got? You're welcome to experiment with this. There we go. Uh, Russian? Is that RU? There we go. All right, a couple different ones. And of course, you see BigQuery support for those special characters as well. Now, that you already have the connection set up. So if you re-ran the same query, do you think it'll show this data or the new data? If you guess new data, you're absolutely correct. Boom, there you go. So advantage, if you have somebody maintaining stuff in Sheets, again, you could have... You know, issues of maintaining your data in a spreadsheet because other people can edit it and you have to deal with the permissioning access of that. But maybe that's a part of your ETL process. Someone's maintaining parameters in a sheet. You need to bring it in there. You can live do that and then say create a replace table or something like that from here. Uh, negative things about external, external data connections. Since the data is not natively stored in BigQuery, you don't get the benefits of BigQuery native storage, which is every time you run this query, you don't get the advantage of cache. Even if it's the same data, same query, it'll never be cached because it's external. Caching is a metadata feature of uh, native BigQuery storage. And uh, again, your query could be a little bit slower because it has to reach out and authenticate that connection to drive. All right, that's it. Go ahead and experiment. Uh, play around with different messages. And again, you can get that uh, code for the Google Translate API directly in there as well. Good luck. Have fun.